and welcome everybody back to Around the Blocks with Mike Knox and the crew here on Fox Sports Radio 1340 AM, Hopewell, Virginia, and Fox Sports Radio 96.9 FM. You already know who I am. I am Mike Knox. I know who this is over here to my left. That's Justin from J uh, New Twist Radio. And listen, y'all see that face on the screen? That ain't Morris Chestnut, people. All right. He may be in L.A. And he may be one of them. My wife loves this man, by the way. But I told him, slow down, baby. You like the older men like me, so leave him alone. But we got no other than the Los Angeles Rams raw receiver, Super Bowl bound, Mr. Van Jefferson, people. Stand on your feet. Give it up for Van Jefferson right here, right now here in the barbershop, people. So give it to him. Give him what you need. Give him all the love and all the accolades that he deserves. Welcome, Van. Welcome to the program, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Glad to be here. Listen, you giving us this time and this week coming up, boy, you look cool as a cucumber. Other side of the pillow, as Stuart Scott would say. <laughs> yeah, man, I think, uh, you know, we just all relax and, you know, just ready to get going, man. I mean, I think, uh, you know, we're all prepared for it. So, you know, we're ready for Sunday. Listen, speaking about Sunday, you're going against that Bengals defense. Some will call it underrated. I'll say, listen, any given Sunday, as the, as the movie would say in itself, um, looking at the game plan, getting ready for this game, how do you think you guys are going to come on this on, on this win on Sunday? I just said on this win, so I guess that kind of opened the door. Uh, man, I think we just got to execute. I think, uh, you know, when we play our best, I think, you know, uh, you know, we can do it all. So I just feel like, you know, just the way we execute, the way we control the ball, you know, ball security, you know, uh, you know, keeping it sharp, man. And like I said, like you said, they're a great defense. You know, uh, you know, they're, they're here for a reason. They beat some great teams. So, you know, we can't take them lightly, man. But like I said, you know, as long as we execute and play our ball, we'll be fine. Listen, playing ball is what you do best. Listen, I'm telling you this right now. Just for you, um, I went and put on this, the closest I can get to a Rams colors, this Lakers jersey I got on. And I tell you one thing. <laughs> it's how you know I'm still rocking the jerseys like in the 90s because I don't rock no Lakers gear. I'm a diehard Bull 76ers fan. And yeah. speaking of that, as a Philadelphia sports fan in general, I was kind of mad my team didn't draft you. How close were you to getting becoming a Philadelphia, uh, Philadelphia Eagle? Because we thought we were going to get you uh, in that second round last year. Yeah, I thought I was close. I'm not going to lie. I thought uh, I definitely thought I was going to go to the Eagles. But, uh, you know, I don't know what happened, man. I definitely, like I said, like going to the draft, I thought I was, you know, going to be Eagle. But, I mean, it didn't work out like that. But, you know, uh, you know, God had a plan, man. And it worked out to the, you know, best, you know, where I need to be at. So I'm excited, man. But, um, uh, hey, I'm playing the Super Bowl, man. So don't get it much better than that. I know that. Listen, ain't no place I'd rather live in this world other than Los Angeles. If everybody get mad, mm -hmm. LeBron, because LeBron went to Miami. I said there was Cleveland, and it was Miami. It wasn't a tough yeah. decision. So you get <laughs> to be in L.A., the city of angels, as they as the game would say, that not only the stars in the sky, we walk on them on the streets as well, as you got the Hollywood Walk of Fame and so forth. How is the how is it fitting in into L.A., especially during this COVID time you've been there for the last two years, actually, right? Yeah, I have. I mean, coming in, your first year I came, you know, COVID was like just hitting, you know, and that's when like, uh, you know, coming out, you know, they canceled, they had canceled pro days and everything like that. So uh, I remember just coming out here, man, it was kind of mostly shut down. So, you know, I really didn't get the experience at LA like that last year, you know, as I have this year when it's opening up more. But, you know, um, you know, I'm from Florida, man. So, you know, Florida, you know, kind of got some of that same weather that, you know, LA, I think it's more humid in Florida, but, you know, it was easy adjusting, man, you know, um, I would say that, uh, you know, you, you, it takes time adjusting anywhere you go. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, the longer I'm here, man, I'm loving it, and uh, I'm glad to be here. Hey, Van, this is Justin, man. Of course, you can see me. I'm used to doing radio stuff, and I got to tell people who I am. But, um, you know, I got a couple questions for you myself. Uh, being an S SEC guy, coming from the SEC, and now going to the pinnacle, right? You have an opportunity to, to stand on the top of that mountain. Talk to us a little bit about the journey that from 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 the high school to SEC to to LA and the Super Bowl. Like, give us a little bit of of, of that insider vision on that journey. Yeah, man. Um, high school, bro. Uh, you know, I switched high schools twice. I did my ninth and tenth grade year in Detroit, Michigan, and then my eleventh uh, and twelfth grade, I did my high school uh, okay. in Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> I did my I did my last two in Nashville, Tennessee. So um, I really didn't get start getting my offers till probably like the end of my junior year. So you know I was kind of like a late bloomer. Some of the other kids were getting offers like ninth grade, tenth grade. So you know I didn't know what was gonna happen. But uh, you know recruiting process was cool. You know I, I honestly wanted to go to uh, Ohio State. That was like my number. That was the number one school I wanted to come out coming out of coming out of uh, high school, man. But you know went down to 
Ole Miss, fell in love with Coach Freeze, you know, uh, went there and then transferred to Florida. So, you know, my journey in, you know, in high school was cool, man. You know, I, I, if I look back on it now, I wish I had more control of my own, you know, recruitment process and stop letting people get more involved, you know, and uh, make decisions for myself. Uh, but to college, man, the college uh, process of it, you know, it's a grind. You know, college is, bro, like, you know, those strength and conditioning workouts, man, they crazy. So, you know, you got to get used to it. <laughs> you know, I'm coming from high school. I'm probably like a buck, a buck 50, you know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, it was a a different change for my body. So, but, um, you know, college was cool, man. And when I especially went to Florida, you know, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. So my family was like literally 45 minutes away. So, you know, I, I, I had, you know, major support from my family. and um. You know, I love Coach Mullen. You know, I love Coach Gonzalez and Coach Savage, those guys down there. So, you know, uh, college helped me, you know, get to this level, man. And um, those guys and uh, go, transition from the NFL, man, it's like, you know, uh, from college to NFL, it's just like, you know, you got to be more of a pro about, you know, how you go about things. You know, you stay in the training room, taking care of your body, you know, and coming in from college, man, you probably you got easy plays in college, but coming in the NFL, you got to learn all these different things you got to learn about the playbook, bro. So, you know, it, it was kind of tough, but, you know, once I got adjusted to it, I was fine, man. But, you know, um, you know, I wouldn't train my journey for anything, man. So that's the reason I'm here. Now, the Super Bowl. All right. Let's talk about the Super Bowl a little bit. You're in you're in L.A., Super Bowl. I know it's a party, right? It's a, it's a, it's a big event for the people that come mm -hmm. into town. It's a big event. You know, they go to parties. They go to this, that, and the third. Uh, it's a two week thing for you guys. You guys do media days and things like that with your preparation for the game itself. Wh what things have you had to do differently between a regular, you know, week to week game and the, and the Super Bowl with, uh, with everything that's going on? How have you been able to stay focused and be in, in, on your on your training? Uh, I think you just got to block out the outside noise. I mean. This is the time where you get, you know, a lot of texts and calls from family you haven't heard of and <laughs> and I don't know how long. So like uh, you know, it's just really just blocking out the noise and you know, just you know, just honing in on what you gotta do, man, you know, and just perfecting your craft and um learning the game plan in and out, man. So and just you know, just controlling what you can control, you know what I'm saying? Don't just be in the moment, you know. Coach McVay always says, learn to be where your feet at, you know, just take it one day at a time, man, you know. And um I think that's what we're doing, that's what I'm doing, and you know, um, you know, just enjoy it, man. Like, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Not a, not a lot of people get to play in the Super Bowl. So just enjoy this moment, man. Have fun. And, you know, uh, when it's game time, man, you got to buckle up and let's go. Well, cousin, um, <laughs> everybody coming out to Wilsburg, uh, you're going to be like, cousin, what's going on? Yeah. So um, always ask this, right, because you, you're getting ready. When you're out there and you're warming up and you're, you're stretching everything out, what's in your headphones? What are you listening to these days? Oh man, I'm listening to a little bit of a uh, Rod Wave, uh, listening to some um, some little baby, listening to Blast. He a, he a local artist out here in LA. Uh, listening to him a little bit, and that's pretty much it, man. I'm kind of mellow, you know, just chill out, you know, just relax, and you know, I, I think I mean you don't need nothing to get you hyped for this game. I mean, you should already be you know motivated to come out there and play. So you know, uh, that's that, that's kind of what I vibe to though. See, well, I mean, I just go to the gym and be like, are you listening? Are you really listening to R&B right now? I'm like, listen, you play what you get you pump. And I love my wife. So, yeah, yeah I'm playing R&B yeah. right now while I'm in the yeah. gym getting it in, <laughs> getting them games. Mm -hmm. right? Yes, I'm playing New Edition. Yeah. Don't judge me, man. But <laughs> with, so, Ben, are you, are you part of the trends as far as I don't know, you got a lot going on with the Super Bowl? I always like to keep things a little different than most interviews you're going to have. Are you a fan of, like Power? Are you watching Power? Are you watching um, the Ghost Series and things like that? Have you had? So, anybody who haven't watched that spoiler, I'm gonna spoil some if he yeah. says he watches it. So go ahead, man. Yeah, I watch it. That's that's like my number one show. Snowfall and Snowfall come back on February 23rd, but yeah. Snowfall and Power those those are my those are my two shows that I rock with. So I'm, I'm watching the uh, finale and got finale. Got to see Force yesterday. Finally get to see Tommy back on the screen. A lot of fans was going crazy about that and that ending. If you have mm -hmm. not seen Ghost season two yet, go watch the ending. All right. Yeah. Because I'm I'm loving what Bra Braden came through for the boy Tyreek. That's for sure. But um, definitely did. <laughs> you, you're, you're sitting here. You, like I said, you get to go to L.A., you get that walk on the stars. It's, it's a dream place of mine, that's for sure. So having this be the second time a team's ever been in the Super Bowl in their home stadium, you get to play, in, in my opinion, I'm just saying this because you're on the show. All right, I'm just a fan. Mm -hmm. The best stadium in the NFL right now is SoFi yeah. Stadium. I'm mad as a wrestling fan. We were supposed to be in there before you guys were because it was supposed to be mm -hmm. WrestleMania there a few years ago, but it didn't happen. It'd be there next year, which I will be there for that one. But Mm -hmm. Looking at this stadium and that people are going to be there in like this halftime shows going, 
how you talking about, you know, you got to ground yourself and keep yourself normal. How can you escape all this? Like with this, you got Snoop and Dre and everybody at the halftime show, these tickets, you got people coming on the roof, $5,000 for tickets and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, how do you keep yourself grounded? So you keep your family around and, and you make sure everything's close knit. Do they, do they hold you down to make sure you don't stray away and do things that, you know, maybe the, the, the most young athletes won't do? Yeah, definitely. I think that's what I do. I think I just hold the people that are uh, closest to me, you know, and uh, they hold me accountable, you know, keep me on my toes and, uh, you know, just keep me grounded. So I just feel like, you know, uh, I'm a person that, you know, just stays humble and, you know, um, you know, I, like I said, I'm just a chill guy and my family does a great job of just, you know, holding me down and keeping me focused and keep keeping me motivated. So, you know, um, I don't have a problem with, you know, just chilling and not getting involved into all the hype and stuff like that. You know, I'm pretty laid back and just chill, love to be around my family and, you know, my mom, my dad and my children and my wife, they always keep me, keep me grounded and hold me down. And, you know, pops, pops ain't playing, you know, pops played in the league. So, you know, he, uh, I was going to say, did you know, he, 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 he hit that backhand on you? Mama pull up yeah, the belt. Yeah, he, yeah, he tripping, he, yeah, he, yeah, you need to be focused. You need to, you need to relax. So, you know, pops ain't going for it. So <laughs> he on me though. That's always a good thing when you have family that makes sure you stay grounded. Like I said, my mom to this day will, it will, if, if you know, will smack me in, in, in a heartbeat. Yeah. You get out of line. I always tell my kids, like, hey, I don't care how old you get. I brought you in this yeah. way. You know, I give him the help, you know, he, you know, yeah. Claire Huxley yeah. line. I take, I take you out. One time I take yeah. that to my son, he was like, you take me out, dad. I'm like, come yeah. down. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not going to kill you, boy. Just making sure you, you got your head on straight. But again, yeah. the big game is this Sunday. The Super Bowl is here. Um, dreams come true can come through for you this Sunday. I, I, I'm not gonna lie, just because you're on the program, I actually hope you guys win the, the Super Bowl as an NFC guy. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm actually rooting for you guys in that manner. Again, that stadium is beautiful. It is um, hoping it just just the party in itself. LA needs a winner other than LeBron. Sorry if you're a fan, of LeBron. I'm not. I'm from Chicago. It's always gonna be Mike for me. So I will ask you this, Mr. LA guy: Who is your goat? Is it Jordan, LeBron, or somebody else? Cause this guy up next to me, he thinks it's Wilt Chamberlain, but you know that's just. Uh, I think it's Kobe. To keep to be honest, I think my goal is Kobe. I think that's that's the that's the athlete I looked up to since I was a little kid. You know, I think just the way his mentality, the way that he played the game. Um, like you said, that mama mentality, man. I think that you know he he was one of the greatest players to ever play. You know, the game of basketball. So that's a he's a he's an icon. So that's who you know, I always looked up to when I was little and growing up. You know, I wasn't quite the basketball player that he was, but uh, you know. He someone I mean, you six foot one you change you can't dunk a basketball van <laughs> who me there, man no oh, van man. oh i think something came in on this yeah, his, his audio. His audio yep but, getting them back in a second <laughs> getting them back in a second <clears throat> getting them back in a, so now i want to hear now i want to sing this song mama mentality Mama Mentality. <laughs> That's all I want to sing right now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Like I wonder, I wonder how many of today's athletes have that. Like they they go into that that Mama Mentality thing. Yeah, I think you know we I mean? might have lost him. So I think he was. Yeah, we. I think I think we're gonna get him back. Yeah, I believe we're gonna get him back. But I know I'm looking forward to the Super Bowl this Sunday. If if, if nothing for anything else, just having and we get him in a different one and move him from there. There you go. Welcome back, man. I'm back. All right. So we were speaking about the mama mentality. And, um, you know, this Sunday, as a fan, excited because, uh, and I'm not, you know, if, even as an Eagle fan, I'm not a hater of Tom Brady like most Eagle fans are. But I will say that from, I'm a big Entourage fan. It's my favorite TV show of all time. It is every mm -hmm. person's job to tell Tom Brady he sucks balls. Not once for me, but once for everybody else who I know who thinks Tom Brady sucks balls. But that's just, again, as fans, we're stupid like that. We don't know no better. But, <laughs> Good to want to see something different and seeing the Rams, seeing the Bengals, it gives us something different. You have one game for the rest of your life. It's coming up this Sunday, the best or the biggest game of your life coming up Sunday. Any predictions for this game on Sunday? I, I think it, it gets, happened it again. Calls. Every time you get a call on, he's going to knock him out a little bit. <laughs> I think it does. He's going to knock him out a little bit. But, yeah, it's been, it's been a pleasure so far, you know, talking to, to Van Jefferson, mm -hmm. wide receiver of the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the L.A. Rams. I keep I got, I keep got having to think about it when I say it, too, L.A. Rams. It's not hard anymore to say the L.A. Rams. It's more hard to say the L.A. Chargers. That's the weirder part of anything. The Chargers, like. Chargers, yeah, that's, that's a tough that's, that's weird because the Rams used to play in L.A. 
So I always thought it was weird saying the St. Louis Rams. I found that was the weirdest one saying St. Louis Rams. So saying L.A. Rams, I don't have a, a difficult time with that. Every time you get a phone call, Van, they see they know the Man, it's the, it's right the phone now. call. Yeah, they keep yeah. calling me on the phone. It's cousin, yeah. cousin P. Yeah. You know what I mean, me a little lucky? <laughs> <laughs> That's all. But I, I was saying, um, any predictions for this game, uh, for Sunday? Like how you going to do, how the team's going to do uh, on Sunday? I think the team is going to do well. I think um, – like I said, we just got to execute. But at the end of the day, you got to know that, you know, that team got here for a reason, too, as well. So, you know, you can't take them lightly. You know, you can't overlook them. You know, they have great players on their team and great players are from across the ball. But I think, uh, you know, our team is going to do well. I think that, uh, you know, we're going to execute the best of our ability, play the play our best ball. And I'm excited, man. I think the, the rest of the guys on the team are excited, too, as well. So um, we're just looking forward to the opportunity. We're thankful and grateful for this opportunity. Like I said, it doesn't come often. So, uh, you know, um, like I said, this is a this is a dream come true. So just got to keep playing, man, and just execute. So you're gonna show the fans of LA who's the real football team in LA, right? Because you know you got the Chargers there, you got the, the Rams there. Just just can separate yeah. it, right? Yeah, for sure. It's definitely can separate it. <laughs> well, listen, guys. With that being said, I want everybody to stand on your feet for the Los Angeles Rams. That chocolate brother, my wife keeps talking about about you. Ooh, she get on my nerve talking about you, man. Listen, Ben. <laughs> Jefferson, thank you for being on the program, big guy. Yes, Appreciate sir. Thank you, you so much.